Once you feel comfortable with the torch, and you can consistently make a good bead and get good penetration, you can try something more advanced, joining some thick plate. If heating is going slowly, remember you can adjust for more. Add a bit more acetylene, then increase the oxygen until the flame is neutral. Thick plates demand special preparation. You have to cut a V to get proper penetration. The root face can be one eighth inch, but no thicker. Keep a quarter inch root opening. You'll get better penetration. Good solid tacks are important. Be sure the plate is completely melted before you add filler. For thick plates, use a heavy filler rod, one eighth or three sixteenths inch. Mix the added rod into the puddle thoroughly. Start welding about one inch in from the edge. Watch the torch angle. It should be about 45 degrees. Try to hold this angle. You'll be using more filler rod than you would normally. Fill the V about halfway to the top. Penetration is important. Keep the metal and the filler rod completely melted. As soon as you complete the short weld, reverse the plate. Don't forget, this metal is hot enough to burn through a glove. Now, start again, welding right to left. Continue the weld, closing the seam for the full length. Fill the V about halfway, keeping the metal fully melted all the way to the bottom. With the first weld complete, you can make a second pass, filling the V. Add enough rod to bring the bead slightly above the surface. This allows for shrinkage. The most important thing to remember is heat thoroughly. Be certain that the welded section, the plate, and the rod are well mixed. Use a semicircular torch motion to keep the puddle moving down the plate. Add enough rod to fill the V. Have the bead slightly higher than the top of the metal. The completed weld should have an even series of ripples. To weld a T-joint correctly, you have to tack the plates firmly. Check that the vertical plate is at right angles to the base. Heat both sides evenly holding the torch at 45 degrees. Bring the rod in and hold it closer to the vertical plate. There's a tendency to melt the vertical first and undercut it. Prevent this by feeding the rod in from the top. As it melts, 
work the puddle down the seam with a semicircular torch motion. Keep the rod close to the vertical plate. Fill the puddle from the top. Then the weld will fill the corner evenly with no undercutting. When you've completed one side, turn the T around. Welding both sides will give maximum strength. When you prove that you can weld on the bricks, you can try other positions. Many times you'll have to run a bead in more difficult situations. You should know how to make a horizontal weld, how to run a bead up vertically, straight up a plate, finally, over your head. Before you start, protect your hair. Sparks will be flying, and you must wear a skull cap. Horizontal welding is easier, but the metal will tend to run down on the lower plate. Keep the rod close to the upper edge. Keep the flame pointed upward to hold the puddle up. Add filler rod from the top, the way you do in welding a feet. Remember that the molten pool wants to run down, so keep pushing it up with the flame. When you come to a tap, weld right through it. You won't have to add as much filler rod here. When you want to weld straight up, start at the bottom. Torch position and angle are the same, but watch the heat. Once you melt a puddle, you have to keep it moving up. Adjust your welding speed to keep pushing the puddle, guiding it with the flame. Use rod as you would normally. If you keep the puddle moving continually, you won't have any trouble making a vertical weld. This may look easier than it really is. It takes a lot of practice to weld in different positions.
overhead welding can be risky. Molten drops of steel may fall, and sparks will be showering down. Safety is important. Protect your head. Long sleeves and gloves are a must. Stand to one side of the weld. Brace your elbow. Try to make the weld without stopping. Heat control is important. As soon as a small puddle is formed, move the filler rod in. Watch closely. If a run starts, move the torch away slightly to reduce the heat. Use a semicircular motion. The trick in overhead welding is the rate of travel, how fast you move the puddle along. The puddle will stay in place if you keep moving steadily. Add rod as you normally would and keep the puddle moving without stopping. Weld right through the tacks. You'll have to be careful adding rod at this point. Be ready to fill again as soon as you pass the tap. Once you're through with an overhead weld, or any welding operation, turn the torch off. Remember, acetylene first, then oxygen. The heat needed for welding steel is 5,800 degrees at the tip. Safety is always a factor. You can start a raging fire in a second if you're careless. Welding is a skill. And learning a skill demands practice, plenty of it. Keep at it, and you'll soon be able to lay a beam, join metal, repair broken parts, build. You'll be ready to join the professional.